Well, Chetum, thank you so much for coming on our show today and sharing with us your um, your experience and knowledge about dyslexia. Um, I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the show. So um, I, I specialize in helping students with dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. And for those of you who aren't familiar with me, my name is Jess Arce. I go by Coach Jess. And um, I myself am dyslexic. And so is my husband and three of our four children. So that's how my journey began. Tell us about how your journey began. Um, do you have dyslexia or does someone you know have dyslexia? So my son was diagnosed with dyslexia about five years ago when he was six years old. Um, and, um, and he was the first one that I actually knew that was dyslexic. A friend of mine had a daughter who was dyslexic, but I didn't really know what dyslexia was at all. And I had to learn it as a parent. And I was in a, a, on a show a few weeks ago uh, with Blue Map Academy, and they said they have an app because I was talking about you know my um, my own struggles uh, as a child because now I'm I'm an author, but I wasn't really good in um, you know writing stories or anything with words. My working memory has always been very poor. And it's like I'm gonna do dyslexia test there, and I was like right borderline dyslexic. And he mm -hmm. said usually if you take it as an ad adult. Um, your score is so much lower. So he said, I unofficially diagnosed you with dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> well, because as an adult, you have learned to, um, to, to function in society so that, you know, you, you wouldn't have as many issues probably. Well, and also because we've got varying degrees. So maybe you're more on the moderate side and your son is probably more, probably more on the severe side. Mm -hmm. So when you discovered your son had dyslexia, um, how, well, well, tell us, what do you, what is it that you do? How about we share that with the, the viewers? Sure. So I'm a, and I have a publishing company and we write and publish decodable chapter books for kids with dyslexia. So um, this all really came about my struggles and my frustration as a parent, not being able to find you know, good quality, high level interest books that were written with decodable words so that my son could enjoy chapter books, especially when he was in second grade, when his friends graduated into chapter books, he was still stuck with baby, babyish books, and he was not happy with that. So it's really started, um, you know, writing for him and, you know, it grew from there. And, you know, now we're a publishing company and we also publish for other um, authors in the neurodiversity area as well. So we have grown quite a lot. If you asked me five years ago if I would see myself here, I would have said no, but I'm just loving every every moment of it. That's awesome. So you went from not really writing um, to becoming a writer for your son. It's, you know, I started my business for my son as well. So um, I had never intended on being a dyslexia tutor or helping people, but when, when our kids need help, we, you know, we, we go above and beyond to make things happen for them. And then it's awesome when we can share what we have learned for our own children with other people in the world. So, um, so your books, what age range are they geared towards? So uh, or I was thinking they would be for ages uh, 8 to 11, but uh, quickly I realized that um, there were a lot of kids in high school who were still reading around grade 2 uh, level that were also benefiting from them. So um, so I can show you a few of my books here. I have um, kind of five of them here. So this is the decodable book Syrian. So like the spelling pen is mostly for like high school kids use those because they're um, a lot more like Harry Potter like stories and there's a lot of action in them out of underlying stories and then I um, I started getting a lot of requests for easier books that are single syllables short vowels only but they're not very babyish looking either and um, so we started with our early decodable series which you can see I mean the covers are a little bit different right you can see that this is for a little bit um, younger audience and um, 
And they again like use only single syllables, all short vowels, very few sight words, and all the sight words are highly frequently used um, sight words as well. And now the next question we get is, um, we need the kids to grow with your books. Now, the, the, there's a request for another series that are a bit higher level, which would include um, um, like a silent E, um, controlled R, and double vowels would be like double E, double O. So that's what we're working on right now. So do you follow any Orton Gillingham based programs or anything like that um, in your in the evolution of your books? So originally, um, because my son did Wilson, it was inspired by Wilson because it was written for him. Mm -hmm. So it was the three levels of Wilson. And, um, and then I started really realizing that, um, you know, there, also I thought Wilson was the only program out there, you know, as a parent just going into it, I didn't really know much. And as I did my research, I learned about all the other wonderful programs out there and learned a lot more about, you know, OG approach. And, um, and I said, okay, all the books have to be uh, in a general format where it fits the first three, four levels of all programs. Mm. Yeah, so Wonderful. So, so the 10 book series we have, which are the, the decodable books, are, um, are all like the first three, four levels on, on all the programs that are out there. Are they all pretty much um, similar in, in, their, in their teaching, the different programs? I'm only familiar with a couple of programs myself because, you know, that I, there's no point in learning every different program because yeah. mm -hmm. in the end, they're, they're pretty much teaching the same. So I have been extremely um, fortunate that I have a group of um, you know, people on my email list that I call my raving fans. They are out there and, you know, like I, I ask them questions, they're tutors and they're from so many different backgrounds. Most of them are parents like you as well. And, uh, you know, we get on Zoom calls and, you know, they're from all around the country. And I say, like, you know, does this sound right with the program you're using and that and that's kind of kind of shapes us. And mm -hmm. I would say um, there are other rules that probably the kids are learning in the program they're in, but I try to pick the sounds that they use in common within the, in these programs. So like, um, like one of them might have already learned the silent T, the other might have already learned maybe control R, but because mm -hmm. one has it, the other doesn't, I didn't include those. I just took a common denominator where all these programs intersect and I chose that to be on the safe side. Yeah, and like the program I use the ma majority of the time is Barton and silent E's don't get introduced until level six. Yes. So that's two thirds of the way done with the program. And with your average storybook, silent E's are introduced in kindergarten level. So, at, you know, it's, it's very hard for someone who hasn't learned silent E's to read any books any traditional books, that is. That, that is true. I think Silent E is, uh, is a big one. And with Wilson, it's level five, which would mm. have been well into second year for my son. And, and I, you know, I mean, there, there really isn't a way you can use a read a chapter book without knowing controlled R and I think Silent E. So that they're very, very frequently frequently used. And um, that's why I said I'm going to create um, a similar type of book, but I, I won't be using um, those. And you know, they, they are decodable as well, but they're like, decodable at a higher level. Would you um, read a couple of pages in one of your books to us to give oh, us a feel for them? Sure. Uh, maybe I can actually explain a few things. I'm going to pick one of my best sellers. I love this book. I, I love the. I love being on the beach. So it just makes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I actually have. Um, if you look at here, a gift tag on every book, in every book, because um, I want the kid to feel like um, this is a gift, right? I don't want this to be a chore for them. And uh, for anyone who buys the books on my website, which is simplewordsbooks.com, there's an option. Um, if I'm the author of the book, then there's an option where um, I would autograph the book if you write the reader's name. And I don't charge for it because uh, I know that my son really enjoyed um, autographed books. It was just a, 
excitement for him and everything I can do is for the, these children to pick up the book for even checking the you know autographed page and then just turn a few pages and then there you can maybe start reading a little bit and then once they start after a few pages they realize that it's not that difficult so um if you look at the fonts I mean there's their spacing my chapters are relatively short uh, another thing I noticed with my son was like, I would say, okay, yeah, you read just one chapter. The first thing is like, where's the chapter ending? How long is it, right? So um, the first book I wrote, which is Sam is Stuck, uh, that has six chapters. And uh, I quickly learned that that's not the right format for a dyslexic child. So all the other books I have written are, um, are uh, maybe like four, three, four pages. And the earlier level is um, not more than two pages per chapter because they don't have the stamina at that at that level to really read through a you know like a you know six ten page chapter well and it and they feel like they've accomplished so much when they read a book that's maybe 10 chapters versus a book that's five chapters definitely what you say yeah that is very true and that's why i have an accomplishment here and, um, and, you know, parents can download us uh, on our website as well if they like um, colored. And um, again, my son loves having certificate of accomplishments all around the, the room. And, um, and it is a big accomplishment. I mean, you know, if you think about how hard these kids work and, you know, it's, it's not easy for them and they don't give up and, you know, the, the homework, everything that they go through, I really want them to feel like they're accomplishing and, you know, everything that they're putting into this is really giving results and you know reading a chapter book i think is a very tangible result that you can feel really good about yourself so at the back of the book i have um, the word list and the word frequency so you can download these for free on our website for each book as well as well as a chapter uh, sample uh, for um, each of our books so, oh nice so what i wanted was like before we read a book i wanted to see if this book was the right level for my son. And the only way you can do it is really see a snapshot of what the words are used. And I didn't see it anywhere. So um, we created a way to get that information to the parents before they buy the book, or if they buy the book and say there are a few words that are difficult for my child, then they can practice those before the child starts reading. So it's fresh in their mind. And it's just one more way to minimize any frustration that they might feel. So that's kind of the um, the uh, the story kind of behind all the pieces in there. So I try to really put things in there that um, that made each and every page enjoyable for the child. And I don't have illustrations except for the first book because what I realized with my son was um, he was trying to guess. He would mm -hmm. see uh, like a cat image, and he would say cat, but it was a puppy in the book. So um, I realized that the illustrations were not helping. It was actually um, encouraging him to guess, which is one of the worst things a dyslexic kid could get used to doing. So um, I took, uh, I, I used no illustrations. Even in the, um, in the easier books, you can see there are no illustrations because I want them to really focus on each word and you know, slow themselves down and decode because that's, that's the only way they can read. And each book, if you buy it on our website, it comes with a free comprehension workbook because the goal of reading is really comprehending the context of, of the text. And that's a you know, way for them, for you know, the teachers or parents to really understand if the child is really understanding what they're reading. No, your books are meant to be used alongside of instruction. Is that correct? Or um, is it meant to replace the need for formal instruction? So no, no, it, it, it's definitely a complementary um, book. And because they are not controlled texts per se, especially the, the 10 book series, I would say they're mostly for fun is how I intended it to be. But because uh, I, I use it in the intersection of all different programs, um, I know a lot of teachers have actually created um, curriculums around the books where um, they read this in the, you know, during uh, group reading, one-on-one -on -one reading or quiet reading times. Well, because and for align, align the books with what's been taught. And, um, and also some of the teachers were very creative. And uh, for example, if they were um, talking about um, maybe friendship 
conflict resolution. Like I have uh, the six days at camp books that are a little bit more like a drama between, um, you know, um, between kids who are at uh, sleepover camp. Um, so they can like, they, they say like that, then they pick the book, they read the book and they start discussions around that because the kids can read it, then uh, they're more involved in the discussions as well. Well, and that's wonderful for um, homeschool families. They can, they could do a theme based on your book. When I was homeschooling my kids, we did that with history. We read around the world in 80 days and made that our theme for the whole year, really. Um, so it sounds like they could do that with your books as well. Yes, and they also have, I think, created book clubs is what I'm hearing with the homeschool groups, especially nice. during COVID. I think that was uh, quite um, an activity because they can do it online as well. And they would read one book and then uh, talk about it, which um, I mean, I'm, I'm so impressed with the, you know, the creativity that came. I would have never imagined all this coming together the way it has. You know, uh, my vision has grown so much with all my readers, the teachers, the parents emailing me saying this is how they use their books. And, um, you know, I'm just humbled by it. That's awesome. That is just, it's so wonderful when we start something and it just grows to, to something so much bigger than ourselves. Yes, I, I really believe that this is why I was um, brought to this earth and I'm an engineer and I said like, I'm, I feel a lot more comfortable with numbers and than words. But mm -hmm. uh, what I realized is, um, you know, writing decodable books is not a, it's not just a creative writing process because there's so, um, so many limitations on what the story can be, what the words can be. It mm -hmm. really is more of a process than let me get the muse and start writing. Yes, yes, definitely. So maybe my engineering side helped here a little bit and I'm sure figure out a very creative way of uh, coming up with these books that um, I seem to be very popular, which you know, I'm happy to say. <laughs> that is so wonderful. Yes, I, I'm so happy that we've been able to hear you talk about your books. And um, would you what what recommendation do you have for parents who are just finding out that their child has dyslexia? Um, I think the biggest um, recommendation I would give is learn about it as much as you can, because the parents, especially if the kids are younger, uh, younger meaning probably um, like middle school or elementary school, um, they might not be able to advocate for themselves yet because they are not also understanding what what um, dyslexia is, what they need, and you know what. Um, you know, what skills they have already that they can uh, maybe um, dip in to say, okay, maybe I'm stronger in this area and I can use that strength to um, overcome some of the, um, you know, weaknesses I have, which is like you and I talked about. There are a lot of um, things we figure out that we compensate for our weaknesses, but at that age, they really haven't figured those out. So I would say learn as much as you can. Um, be kind to yourself as a parent and, you know, just, um, just, I think, have a lot of patience because school is such a small part of a child's life and there's so much more to them than, you know, their grades. And I know it's sometimes harder to feel that way, especially when you think about, you know, what's going to happen as they go into high school and college. But I feel like just taking it one day at a time and thinking about the, old, the whole child helped us a lot because, um, you know, as we focused on, I want a lifetime learner not uh you know a student mm -hmm. the whole uh, perception around dyslexia change in our household and um and and I, I i'm i'm very confident that my son will be just okay because he loves learning he loves trying different things and and dyslexia really gave him the strength to persevere which um he even i think at this point like he's he's 13 now he realizes that um, he doesn't give up like some, you know, other people his age would because that's, that's what he knows. Right. He has to work harder. That is amazing advice. I, I love it, but it really is invaluable to educate ourselves. That's what I did when I first found out my kids had dyslexia. And um, it was so many years ago that I kind of forgot that that's, that's how I spent many months um, 
at the beginning, learning as much as I could about dyslexia. And hopefully with these interviews, people can learn more about their, their children or themselves, because very often we find out that we are the, the line of our children's dyslexia that we didn't even realize because we don't realize that what we experienced might not be what the average learner experiences. That, that is really true. That's really true. And, and also, if you think about um, uh, like all the information out there, um, I sometimes feel like uh, we judge really quickly. So, um, so I've done some summits early on because um, I interviewed so many people for my own information. And they were so helpful. I said, um, I, I need to do the summits. I don't know if um, you know that I have done some summits and the last one was in, I think, 2019. With COVID, so much online has come up. I said, that, that doesn't have to be my focus because that wasn't our core competency. So we focus more on writing books than uh, advocacy um, since so much online resources became available in the last um, 18 months or so. Um, I. Like I would interview people that maybe I didn't agree with their opinion, but I always said like, who am I to judge that he might not or she might not be able to help another family? Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, we would get comments like, you know, this is not scientific. I said, I know, and that's how we started the conversation. We said, this is not scientific. And, you know, what I, when I interview someone, I don't interview the people that I, I like what they're saying. Sometimes controversial topics can be beneficial too. So there could be people who would say, you know, these books, like my books don't help. That's okay. If it doesn't help, then don't use them. If it helps, use it. If, mm -hmm. um, you know, sleep helps one child, it was very big for my son. And when I said that, you know, there would be people saying sleep has nothing to do with dyslexia. I said, I know. You need structured, uh, explicit training so that they can learn to read. But when my son was didn't sleep well, and he then he couldn't learn as well as when he was well rested. So it's again, I, hearing that information, whatever applies, you pick it, whatever it doesn't mm -hmm. apply, we just move on, right? And I think, um, and I think doing that helped me a lot. Well, like for me, I think um, a good healthy diet is imperative for a dyslexic person to be successful. And I mean, someone might say that has nothing to do with tutoring, but if your child is just filling their body with junk, their, their brain is not at its top ability to learn. And, you know, us dyslexic people need to be at our, at our highest every day in order to learn what the average person can learn any day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to be at our best and getting eight hours or more of sleep is imperative. Me personally, I cannot function on less than eight hours of sleep. So, so um, you said that you are going to donate um, your book for some of our listeners. Can you tell us a little bit about your donation? Sure. So um, uh, we would like to do like a, a giveaway for our books. So um, if they can email, you know, you or um, I guess maybe they can go to, you know, email you and um, and we can just, you know, randomly pick names and and um, and give them a, a, a book. And if they they have to give their e ma uh, mailing address, their name, their uh, phone number, uh, if they win, and also um, if they want to autograph the reader's name, and I will awesome. autograph them and mail them to each uh, each person. And do they pick the book, or do you have a book picked out for our winner? You know what? They should pick it. Why not? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that way, if they're an older student, they don't get a book for a second grader. Yeah. Or if they already have a book and they want another one that we have, sure, they can they can book. And and let's do um, let's do five readers, not just one. Five for one, one, five but, readers for one person or one reader for five people. I would say uh, five winners. They all winners. Wow, that's very five, generous of five, you. Five, five is my lucky number. It has always uh, brought some wonderful things to my life. Let's do five readers, uh, one book each, and they can pick the book they want. And again, uh, one, uh, if they're the winners, and they would have to give you their email address, their um, mailing address, 
the, their name and phone number so we can mail the books to them. And if they want an autograph, then um, just the reader's name. And I always, you know, write an encouraging note in it, like, you know, enjoy reading, have fun reading, you know, follow your heart, you know, shoot for the stars, things like that. So that it's a little bit more personalized than just, um, you know, saying, um, just sit down, can <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is so awesome. And um, I actually, I'm finishing up a book right now that's meant for parents. Um, and it's an easy reader because, very many of um, our students, parents also have dyslexia. So I want to make it easy for parents to be able to read about dyslexia. And so anyway, after that book, um, one of my tutors who is an artist and I will be coming up with a children's book. So I, I will have to talk to you about getting it published with your, um, with your publishing company because that would be, you know, amazing if it was available to people who are dyslexic and it's very, it'll be very different than your style. Um, we actually haven't worked out all the details yet, but. Sure, I'm, I'm here to help. I mean, you know, um, I, I always tell people, um, there are I think also people who are very passionate in the neurodiversity uh, community that wants to tell their story. Um, you know, we, we do publish uh, other people's stories right now. They're non-decodable books. We have uh, one that just came out in mid-February, Mark Kaufman's book. And he's actually so generous. He's a successful dyslexic. Um, and his book, uh, he actually is donating one book for each book sold for the, one, uh, for, for the first thousand copies. So, um, you know, I think we should include that as well for one, one of my books and one of his books for everyone who's winning. And what's his book about? So um, it's about uh, perseverance, self-awareness, and um, positive mindset. And in his book, uh, he's, a, he's, a, um, he's an educator right now, and he has his own um, coaching business, and he coaches children who have uh, learning differences. So in, the, in this first book, he touches these three principles, and um, it's more of a cartoonish um, uh, book where um, he talks to three different kids about each of these um, principles. Mm. And, and it, it also talks about his own struggles when he was a child. He gives us, you know, he's a, it's a very vulnerable book early on saying, this is how I was, this is how I felt, and this is how I overcame it. And then he talks to three children. Um, and it's not a decodable book, but it, you know, we, we were very cautious about trying to pick up uh, words that are easier to use mm -hmm. and easier to read. Uh, but of course, when you think about, you know, perseverance, there is no easy way to, <laughs> we were thinking about grit, but, um, you know, that didn't really, um, you know, really match the meaning as well. So, um, so, so, so it's a pretty amazing book. We have, we're getting really good uh, feedback and reviews about it. So, um, you know, I would be honored to actually give that to um, everyone who's getting one of my books as well. Wonderful. So the winner will get two books, five winners, two books each. Is that my understanding? Yes. And again, if you will go to uh, simplewordsbooks.com, you can scroll down the homepage and you can see every single book we have that's 14 titles that are decodable. And if you click on the, uh, there are different tabs and you can click on the word list, you can see the, um, the words used and how many of those, you know, each word is used. You can see a chapter sample. And I would recommend if this is the first book you're buying from us or you're getting from us, um, try to pick a topic that your child would enjoy reading because um, if they're interested in the topic, it's just that much easier for them to pick up that book. And mm -hmm. if you want to have um, a character who's dyslexic, we have our spelling pen series. There are three books. And I would say, um, if you don't have the first book, which is the, um, in Alfland, then don't, buy, don't ask for the other ones because that's kind of continues, the story builds up on each other. So you would really want to have the first book before reading the second and third. And what's the first book called again? Uh, spelling Pen in Elfland, that's the one. Oh, Spelling Pen in Elfland, okay. Yeah, it's two siblings and, 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 and it, um, pretty much in all my books the, um, the, that are in the mid-level, mid, mid um, there's always a female and a male main character because um, I wanted to make the books gender neutral as much as possible. 
And even if I have like, you know, in this book, which, you know, I love the cover, I told you, um, there are two cats and one of them is a male, one of them is a female. Mm. And do you also do the artwork or do you have someone else do your covers? Oh, yeah, I, I have an amazing illustrator. Um, if you go to my Instagram page, uh, I think it was uh, Spelling Pen in Elfland, I put out there, I give her chicken scratches and, you know, <laughs> and I feel like this is how I envision it. We found a really good way to communicate. I, I tell her the colors I'm envisioning, but with um, pictures I find all around, you know, social media or real life or just TV or maybe, you know, in a grocery store, I see a cherry and I love the red there. I take photos and I said, this is how I envision it. And she brings them to life just as I dreamt of. I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable relationship. I'm again, so grateful. It's been, a, it's been such a wonderful experience, such a life-changing experience for me. And there have been so many people who supported me. So going back to what I was saying, I do jump from topic to topic, which is you know kind of my how my brain works. Um, like if you are in the neurodiversity uh, field and you say um, I want to talk to somebody about publishing, you don't ever have to publish with us. Reach out to me. I'm here as a resource. So many people helped me out when I was starting and but not expecting anything back from me. And I'm giving back to that community that supported me so much. And and my family, my son, you know, we were all very grateful for for everything the community has offered us over the last five, six years. So well, you are back. So you know I'm here, you know, whoever needs me, it's very easy to get back to me. But uh, you can find me uh, through our website and uh, email me. I read every single email and I respond you know, there are a lot of people who could attest to that. <laughs> well, thank you, Chetum. I really appreciate you and you taking the time to talk to us today and share with us your passion about your book and neurodiversity. And I definitely will be talking to you about publishing. So thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>